Hello and welcome to another episode of Study This, where we review various textbook chapters. Today we'll be going over chapter 10 of Guyton and Hall's Medical Physiology, where we essentially describe the circuit board of the heart and how it functions to allow the heart to contract in a rhythmic way and in a synchronous way as well. If you're feeling generous, please feel free to give the video a like and subscribe to the channel. It will help us out greatly and allow us to continue to make these videos. So a concept that we should talk about first is why do we actually need the circuit board within the heart? And what we're trying to do, the overall concept of the electrical activity of the heart is to actually stimulate the atrium to beat first, so the top chambers to beat first, fill the ventricles with blood, priming them to pump and eject that blood out of the heart. And then there needs to be a delay between that signal between the atriums and the ventricles to allow that blood to fill since the electrical activity moves quite fast. And then after that delay, we need to send that electricity through the heart muscle all simultaneously so then the heart all contracts as one rather than one portion contracting before another portion which will just result in a, a poorly synchronized contraction and reduced force would be generated. So our various electrical components of the heart include the sinus node which is our pacemaker that is what stimulates the heartbeat. We have our internodal pathways in the atrium so these pathways are thought of as highways so they help to send that electrical signal around the atrium so then the entire atrium can contract as one. We then have the AV node or the atrioventricular node and this is located at the junction between the atrium and the ventricles and its function is to delay that signal from being sent to the ventricles to allow them to fill with blood and then we have the bundle branches of the Purkinje fibers and these also act as highways but this time for the ventricles to send that signal around the entire heart muscle or the heart, entire ventricular muscle so then they can all contract as one. Now the sinus node is located in the right atrium kind of near the superior vena cava and it has a self-excitation ability so it is able to spontaneously produce its own action potential resulting in a rhythmic impulse that stimulates a regular heartbeat and it does that through naturally leaky sodium and calcium ions and the reason why these calcium and sodium ions are naturally leaky is because the resting membrane potential never actually reaches the normal low value of negative 90. We're more sitting up here at negative 55 millivolts. So not all of those so fast sodium channels will actually close. And there is some, if we get into more details, there's some other sodium channels which remain open called the funny current channels. Um, but the, essentially there is a leak of sodium into the cell resulting in this very gradual increase in the resting membrane potential. It's not a instant depolarization because it's just a slow leak but there's a, a very gradual increase in resting mem membrane potential until we reach threshold. Once threshold is reached, we then open up our calcium channels, our L-type calcium channels, which then results in a rapid influx of calcium and our action potential. Then the calcium channels close, potassium channels open, which leave the cell repolarizing the membrane, but only getting to negative 55 millivolts. So those are our main components, our slow leaky sodium channels, which are allowing sodium to enter the cells. We reach threshold, calcium channels open, influx of calcium resulting in an action potential, and then those close and our potassium channels open, and then we have a loss of potassium and a loss of positive ions out of the cell, so repolarization. And this is superimposed on top of our ventricular muscle fiber, showing how the resting membrane potential is quite different from the sinus nodal tissue. And then so once that sinus node actually sends off its signal so our sinus node over here in our right atrium it, it gets spread to the atrial muscle nearby but then also through these highways and the internodal pathways so we have three of them our anterior middle and posterior which all send that signal around the atrium so then our two atria are going to contract at the same time and then they all congregate into the AV node so they turn into this AV node which functions, as we've already mentioned, to slow that impulse. So it's a nice kind of traffic jam here because there is a reduction in gap junctions. So there is a higher resistance and we have a slowing of that impulse coming through this junction here until we reach our bundle branches or our Purkinje fibers and then it turns back into a highway. So you can think of it as two highway systems 
separated by a area of traffic jams or traffic lights, which prolongs the impulse. So then the atrium can fill the ventricles with blood, giving it that time. And then the Purkinje fibers then function to actually send the impulse right around the left and right side of the heart. So then the entire ventricular muscle is able to contract as one. So these Purkinje fibers send a rapid velocity impulse around to the different ventricular muscle. And we can see that here. These are all the time points at which the impulse reaches the heart. Now a feature of the AV node that I should briefly mention here is that it is a one-way track. So you can't have that impulse going backwards through the AV node. We, in some disease states, we do have an anomalous pathway through the fibrous membrane between the atrium and ventricle. So then we can have the ventricular impulse spreading through the ventricles and then it manages to spread back over that fibrous membrane and then re-stimulate the atrial tissue. And that results in what's called an arrhythmia or an abnormal heart rhythm. Um, but that's an abnormal process, that's a pathological process. So that is the normal heart rate. So we have the sinus node as our pacemaker, sending the impulse through the atrium, delayed at the AV node, then sent through the ventricular muscles. Now we do have other ectopic pacemakers or other pacemakers cells within the body. Now the AV node can also have a self-excitation property and so do the Purkinje fibers. But the AV node is a lot slower then the sinus node, so the sinus node always overrides it, and then the Purkinje fibers are even slower still. So if the SA node decides not to fire, then the AV node, which is its own self-excitation process, will be able to fire after a period of time. And then if the AV node doesn't fire, then the Purkinje fibers can fire after some time as well. And these impulses created by these other pacemakers are called escape beats, because they only occur when there is a delay in our normal sinoatrial impulse and the heart is escaping. So then our heart can continue to beat even if the sinoatrial no node becomes dysfunctional. Now when this occurs, if there is a sudden cessation of an impulse, let's say through the AV node, so the ventricular muscle never gets told to fire, then the Purkinje fibers will kick in and do their own pacemaker, but there is a bit of a delay when it's been suppressed for so long. So then there may be a delay in the heartbeat for several seconds to even up to 20 seconds. And during that time, if you're a person, then you're actually faint because you don't have oxygen delivered to your brain. But after that 20 second time frame, hopefully the pacemaker will then kick itself into gear and then start to do its own firing at usually a pretty slow rate, but at least it will be rhythmic and you won't actually collapse anymore, but you won't feel good when you try to do any sort of activity. And then we've got some other ways that we've already talked about in the previous chapter that the heart rhythm is controlled. So our parasympathetic nervous su supply is mainly innovating into the sinoatrial node and the AV nodes. And when it sends off an impulse, it releases acetylcholine from the vagal nerve endings, from the vagus nerve, and that actually functions to slow the rhythm of the sinoatrial node and the AV node conduction. And it does that by increasing the permeability to potassium ions. So now our resting membrane potential gets even lower. So those leaky sodium channels now have to leak even more sodium in order to reach threshold. So since we have a longer time until threshold is reached, our heart rate slows down. And then, then at the AV node, since we have a lower resting membrane potential, we just need a stronger impulse from the atrium to stimulate a beat through the AV node. So we can get some blocks through the AV node. With sympathetic innovation, then, which is mainly also innovating all the heart muscle itself, but it releases norepinephrine, which does all its effects through the beta-1 adrenergic receptors. And what it does is increase the permeability to sodium and calcium. So two effects there, since sodium and calcium are involved with that slow increase in resting membrane potential, we're gonna reach threshold faster since we have more leaking. And then since we have increased calcium entering the cell, we're gonna have stronger contractions since calcium is directly related to cardiac muscle contraction. And then that really summarizes our chapter for today. Please feel free to drop a comment. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next video.